Anthropologist Hermann Schorfhausen once observed that, in the most ancient crania, the occipital was the most developed, and the frontal region the least developed, and the increase in the elevation of the latter marked the transition from barbarous to civilized man. Nevertheless, recent discoveries of skull, face and jawbones, identified as belonging to early members of our species have been dated to around 315,000 years ago, at an archaeological site on the Atlantic coast of northwest Africa. That means Homo sapiens arose more than 100,000 years earlier than previously thought. Most academics believe our species originated in East Africa around 200,000 years ago. New discoveries of fossils and stone tools from the archaeological site push back our species' origins by 100,000 years, and demonstrate that by 300,000 years ago, significant changes in human biology and behavior had occurred across most of Africa. The unexpected finding of 300,000-year-old remains in a Moroccan mine, called into question the theory that modern humans developed in East Africa 200,000 years ago. The facial bones were similar to those of modern humans, but they had significantly larger lower jaws and longer posterior brain cases. The fossils have been dubbed early Homo sapiens due to their modern-looking faces, but is a modern-looking face truly a characteristic unique to Homo sapiens? Furthermore, the discoveries raise an important question. Should paleoanthropologists even consider the Jebel Erhoud remains to be Homo sapiens? The evidence from Jebel Erhoud adds to the discussion of where anthropologists should draw the line regarding how modern something needs to be to term it a Homo sapiens. For example, paleoanthropologist John Hawkes of the University of Wisconsin is dubious about the study's statements that the Moroccan fossils belong to the Homo sapiens lineage. These publications, according to Hawkes, are going too far. They reinterpret Homo sapiens by introducing a new category of early modern humans that he has never seen before, and he warns against exaggerating the impact of the publications. The Moroccan skulls resemble the enigmatic Florisbad skull, dated to 260,000 years ago at the other end of the continent in Florisbad, South Africa, and now assigned to Homo sapiens based on the Jebel Erhoud discoveries. The Florisbad skull dating, however, has been called into question by Hawkes who believes the skull is significantly younger and thus not an specimen of early Homo sapiens. When Chris Stringer, lead paleoanthropologist at the Natural History Museum in London and co-inventor of the Out of Africa Hypothesis, first encountered the Jebel Erhoud remains in the early 1970s, he was perplexed. He was certain they weren't Neanderthals, but they appeared too young and rudimentary to be Homo sapiens. Stringer feels that the Jebel Erhau bones are solidly on the Homo sapiens lineage, based on the older dates and additional new bones. They elevate Morocco from a presumed backwater in our species' evolution to a significant position. According to the Jebel Erhau study, around 330,000 to 300,000 years ago, early humans may have been a vast, interbreeding population distributed across Africa. As a result, the rise of modern humans may have occurred on a continental scale rather than in a specific corner of Africa. The bones are the oldest known specimens of modern humans, according to the lead archaeologist from Germany's Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, and pose a major challenge to the idea that the earliest members of our species evolved in a Garden of Eden in East Africa, 100,000 years later. Indeed, this paints a very different picture of our species' evolution. It stretches much further back in time, but the process of evolution itself is totally different from what we imagined. Our species appears to have been present throughout Africa by 300,000 years ago. If there was a Garden of Eden, it would have been the size of Africa. Until now, prevailing wisdom held that our species arose quite fast, somewhere in a Garden of Eden, most likely in sub-Saharan East Africa. But now the Garden of Eden in Africa is probably all of Africa and that's a really big garden. A quick look at a map will show you how vast of a continent Africa is. The distance from Morocco to South Africa is almost 5,000 miles, and much further avoid the Central and West African rainforests. The distance is close to the distance from Morocco to India. But why did these early modern humans stay in Africa for so long? Rather than going abroad, as the out-of-Africa theory holds? To suggest that they were somehow unable to leave Africa until they become modern defies credulity, 
In my opinion. Anthropologists believe that before 300,000 years ago, our subspecies, or at least the most rudimentary version of our subspecies, dispersed over Africa. Around this time, the Sahara was lush with lakes and rivers. Animals found in the East African savanna, such as gazelles, wildebeest and lions, were also found near Jebel Erhoud, implying that these ecosystems were formally linked. Truth be told, scientists have long suspected that modern humans originated in East Africa. Until the recent discoveries at Jebel Erhoud, the oldest known vestiges of our species were discovered at Omo Kaibish in Ethiopia, and dated to 195,000 years ago. Other fossils and genetic evidence from Africa all point to modern humans having originated in Africa. According to the researchers, they attempted and failed to collect DNA from the Jebel Erhoud bones. A genetic investigation may have determined if the remains belong to the lineage that led to modern humans. Previous research at Jebel Erhoud estimated their age to be only 40,000 years and proposed that these were Neanderthals that lived in North Africa. In fact, mankind has evolved as the result of the punishing, unrelenting burden of life on Earth. But some paleontologists are skeptical that they should be classified as Homo sapiens. Too many different looking fossils have been grouped under the species, confounding efforts to identify new fossils and develop scenarios for how, when, and where our species evolved. The closest similarity in terms of appearance of Jebel Erhoud was with modern humans. The lower jaw was also comparable to that of modern Homo sapiens, although much larger. The most noticeable change was the shape of the brain case, which was longer than that of modern people. It implies that the present brain arose in Homo sapiens, and was not passed down from ancestors. Apart from being more thick and strong, the adults in Jebel Erhoud resembled modern people. Others, however, believe that the current human-like face evolved independently numerous times, among prehistoric humans. Indeed, Homo antecessor implies that the current human face evolved and vanished several times in the past, which is not surprising given that facial architecture is heavily impacted by diet and the environment. Unlike most other archaic humans, the mandible of Homo antecessor is also quite gracile. Homo antecessor is the oldest known modern face found in Spain, just across the Strait of Gibraltar from Morocco. Its delicate cheekbones and flattened features are akin to those observed in current humans, as opposed to Neanderthals' massively constructed faces. Because Homo antecessor is at least 800,000 years old, our so-called modern face is actually a very ancient face. In point of fact, a new study reveals that human facial traits can be traced back to our very ancestors. Some argue that the similarities between contemporary humans' face traits, and the contentious early Pleistocene hominid species known as Homo antecessor, indicate that they were the last common ancestors of modern humans, Denisovans, and Neanderthals. As stated, the earliest Homo sapiens fossils have been discovered across the African continent, including Jebel Erhoud in Morocco, 300,000 years ago, Florisbad in South Africa, 260,000 years ago, and Omo Kaibish in Ethiopia, 195,000 years ago. This suggests that our species has had a complex evolutionary history, maybe involving the entire African continent. However, some anthropologists find the theory of African multi-regionalism implausible. The theory is that as early Homo sapiens scattered across Africa, components of human modernity arose in different places, and so diverse parts of Africa contributed to the creation of what we now term modern humans. One of the other major debates about the evolution of anatomically modern humans has been whether our body design evolved fast, or slowly. This discovery at Jebel Erhoud appears to point to the latter. Our faces appear to have evolved long before our skulls took on their current shape. But anthropologist Lee Berger, who discovered the 300,000-year-old Homo naledi, an archaic-looking human relative near the cradle of humankind site, outside Johannesburg, South Africa, said he is skeptical that modern humans lived all over Africa that long ago. They've taken two data points and drawn a giant map of Africa between them, he explained. Furthermore, John Shea, an archaeologist at the University of New York, expressed skepticism any time academics claimed to have discovered the oldest of anything. It's best not to judge by the big splash they make when they're first announced, 
but rather to wait and see if the waves from that splash have altered the shoreline some years down the line. Shea was particularly concerned by scientists merging fossils from various fossils, and comparing reconstructions of entire skulls from partial remnants. These chimeras can resemble the humans on which they are based, but claiming these remains are Homo sapiens stretches the definition of that term a little. These early Homo sapiens, who lived between 100,000 and 300,000 years ago, have a diversified morphology. When we locate more than a couple of them from the same deposit, such as Omo Kaibish and Herto in Ethiopia or Skul and Kafsa in Israel, their morphology varies greatly, both within and between samples. Because the human fossil record from this time period in Africa is so poorly represented, these fossils are the rarest of the rare. They provide us with an up-close view at what early members of our species looked like and how they behaved. Some bones appeared far too primitive to be anything understandable, so people came up with some strange ideas. If you observed large brow ridges on a real person, you might think twice about them. It's not a face you'd see every day, but it's definitely recognizable as a modern person. It appears that human evolution was characterized by multiple different species all existing at the same time, and probably even in the same regions, particularly in Africa. This specimen at Jebel Erhoud is a time and a half older than any other Homo sapiens specimen. According to the findings, our species entered the globe face first, gaining current facial features while the back of the skull remained extended, like those of ancient people. The findings also imply that the earliest chapters of our species' history may have taken place over the entire African continent. At the time, these hominins were on the outskirts of the planet, compared to those in Eurasia. The conventional wisdom holds that Homo sapiens evolved roughly 200,000 years ago. Some experts believed our species' path may have began even earlier. According to paleoanthropologist John Hawkes, Geneticists date the separation between humans and our closest cousins, Neanderthals, to at least 500,000 years ago. So you could expect to find traces of our species in Africa before 200,000 years ago. The fossils indicate that current traits emerged before the skull and brain took on the globular shape, found in herto fossils and living individuals. It's a long narrative, but these people didn't become modern overnight. The reconstructed composite shows a short, modern-looking face with a long, low brain case reminiscent of archaic humans. Neanderthals exhibit the same pattern. 400,000-year-old fossils in Spain show elongated, archaic skulls with unique Neanderthal features in their faces. It's a plausible hypothesis that the face evolves first, however scientists aren't clear what selection factors are at work. The skulls are so transitional that labeling them is difficult. The team refers to them as early Homo sapiens rather than the early anatomically modern humans reported by Omo and Herto. In fact, some may still regard these robust humans to be highly evolved Homo heidelbergensis, as the cranium appears to be towards the root of the Homo sapiens lineage. The archaeologists do not claim that the Jebel Erhoud people are directly related to the rest of us. Rather, they believe that these ancient people were part of a huge, interbreeding population that swept across Africa around 300,000 to 330,000 years ago, when the Sahara was green. They eventually progressed as a group toward modern humans, and the evolution of Homo sapiens occurred on a continental scale. Thus, given the modern faces and primitive brain cases of the Jebel Erhoud fossils, the traits associated with modern humans most likely did not emerge all at once. Instead, the qualities we connect with anatomically modern humans are likely the result of a form of mosaic evolution, that Neanderthals also appear to have had. Many scientists have highlighted the relatively archaic features of the Jebel Erhoud brain case, as well as some facial parallels to modern people. To some, the use of the term early modern humans makes sense. And, regardless of specific labeling, the Jebel Erhoud fossils have a place in the human tapestry. This is fossil evidence of a population 300,000 years ago that resembles current humans in a remarkable number of ways, and you can make of it what you will. According to other archaeologists, you can either broaden the concept of Homo sapiens to include Jebel Erhoud, or these were creatures on their way to becoming modern humans. In reality, 
African paleontology falls much behind that of Eurasia in terms of Homo sapiens genesis and evolution. To be honest, the creation of a pure human form on one continent and its spread to replace all others has major implications. In Europe, it is referred to as colonialism, whereas in the United States, it is referred to as manifest destiny. What's more, the paleontological basis of the out of Africa idea remains uncertain, a problem that has gotten worse in recent decades as the Eurasian paleontological record has grown. And as a result of recent remarkable findings, the story is becoming increasingly complicated. There is one major issue with the African multi-regionalism narrative. Genetic analyses of today's African populations imply that they separated from one another between 100,000 to 150,000 years ago, much later than bones and tools suggest. However, more recent population upheavals have changed the DNA of today's Africans, obscuring the events of 300,000 years ago. Furthermore, the research that examined this modern DNA relied heavily on tree-like population models, in which a single lineage emerges from a single location, exactly the scenario that proponents of African multi-regionalism argue is incorrect. To learn more about what happened, we need to collect more data from several of Africa's gaps. We have the earliest Homo sapiens fossils from only 10% of Africa, and we're projecting that to 90% of the continent. The vast majority of it remains unexplored. We're practically suggesting that those locations aren't worth investigating because we have a 10% response rate. In point of fact, the author of the Jebel Erhoud study argued at the Symposium on the Evolution of Modern Humans in 2014, that the prevalent ideas of human beginnings in Southern and East Africa are erroneous, due to the use of selective evidence. He referred to this concept as the streetlight effect, which relates to scientists' general desire to hunt for evidence where they can see it the best. The streetlight effect is a type of observational bias that occurs when people only look for objects where it is easiest to look, because finding things in poorly lit regions is more difficult. As a result, he theorized on why early Homo sapiens societies appear to have respected the border between Botswana and South Africa, as demonstrated by archaeological site maps. He also noted that, while there is a lot of work done in South Africa, there isn't much in more difficult regions like Angola or Mali. The scientists call out of Africa a convincing and elegant explanation, but as time passes, the commonly accepted narrative of a geographically well-defined cradle of mankind, and a small founder population may show to be an oversimplification, if not a new creation myth.